What's up guys? It's your boy Bowen. I just freaking woke up. So as one of you guys requested, I should do like a technical breakdown of the night sky sword. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And so first of all, I'm just gonna insert this picture of the night sky sword as a canvas so that I have like a pretty good reference of where to map my points. Then I'm just gonna quickly create sketch then start drawing the outline of the blade until this point when the blade would basically start to transition into the handguard. That's where I'm gonna be stopping and just like draw, draw an invisible line to like close the contour. Then I'm just gonna like simply extrude that uh, with the symmetric settings for a thickness of about 15 millimeters. Then we're gonna be doing the bevels. For that we're just gonna be using chamfers. I'm just gonna use this uh, two distance setting for a width of nine millimeter and a depth of 7.5 millimeter. So uh, if you look at from the side, it should basically look like this. And that's basically the blade done at this point. And then now we can move on to the handguard. Now this part is gonna require like a shit ton of your attention. I'm gonna need you to pay attention here with me. So uh, first thing is gonna be like roughly drawing the outline of this handguard. And then we're also gonna be drawing like this inner side of the contour as you guys can see here. Now this is where things go from zero to 100 real quick. Firstly, you wanna get rid of every single one of these cons constraints basically just all this grayish semi-transparent sides because that's really gonna fuck up the next step and then once you do you're gonna want to select every single line from the inner contour and then hit m to move and then you move that thing 75 millimeters down this third axis and this way the flat 2d sketch is basically gonna turn into a three-dimensional wireframe which is a very important tool that we're gonna be using in the next step but by the way i'm just gonna go and select these few lines as we previously did with the inner contour but we're just gonna do it for only about 7.5 millimeter height now what we're gonna want to do at this point is that we're gonna want to draw a bunch of lines connecting these two offsetted profiles that we got here so uh, here's where you're gonna need a little bit of your imagination if you think that this thing actually likes looks straight from the other side, you're just gonna want to use line. But if this thing is a little bit bent, concave or convex in a way, you're gonna want to be using spline because that way you could like uh, control this curve in a three-dimensional way. And now once you have something that looks approximately like this, you're gonna want to move to the surface tab and then hit patch. And so you're gonna want to select the lines on the sketch that you just did so that we could like start patching up this 3D wireframe. And then basically rinse and repeat on the entire 3D sketch until everything is covered up. Once you got there, we're gonna hit mirror, change the setting to face, and then select all the patch surfaces that we just made in the previous step. And then mirror it to the other side. And basically have this enclosed bunch of patchwork. And I'll go back to surface again and then select stitch, select all those surfaces, then hit OK. And there we go. We basically have this complex looking handguard done. Wasn't so hard now, wasn't it? Now we can just like move on with the handle. This one is pretty easy. Firstly, you're gonna wanna draw a center line that splits this thing in half. And then you're only gonna wanna be like drawing on one side, following along the outside counter of like the upper side or the underside. And then you're gonna wanna go to solid and then hit revolve, select that profile you just did and then use the center line as the axis so that we could get like a cylindrical looking handle. And then uh, for the body that I just made, I'm just gonna like copy and paste it once and then like uh, scale it, resize it to something about like 1.105 so that we got like a copy of this body that's like slightly bigger than the, than the one we just made. And once that's done, we're gonna create another sketch and then I'm just gonna like quickly draw this uh, overlay right here. And then we're gonna be using that pattern we just drew as like a cutting tool. So we're just gonna go and select split body and then use those lines to create this overlay shape. At this point, this thing is practically done. I'm just gonna wanna use fillet on this edge of the handle as well as this ring up here. If you look at this area under the handguard, it's looking pretty thin now, isn't it? We're gonna want to thicken that up. I'm just gonna like quickly draw like this oval shape and then extrude it so that it would like combine with the blade, the handguard, and the handle. Now for finishing touch, I'm just gonna draw the star engraving on this lower side of the handle. And then I'm gonna extrude it with distance of like two millimeters and this and a minus 20 degrees taper angle. So that, uh, that's basically the night sky sword model done right there. And now we're gonna be breaking apart this sword for printing. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm just gonna like go and make like a first splitting line at around this point uh, in this transition between the blade and the handle where the curve is at its lowest. And I'm just gonna like 
draw a line splitting it apart then we might want to just like uh, leave that there for now i'm just gonna like draw this line somewhere in the middle between uh this part of the handle and the and the pommel it's gonna split split it entirely in half and then i'm just gonna like give it about like a 50 millimeter clearance but for what uh we're gonna get that later and then from this line that i just made with the 15 millimeters we're gonna we're gonna offset that to about like 28 centimeters on the other side which is about which is about 280 millimeters and i'm just gonna like start drawing three more lines with an equal distance from that point now this lines we're gonna be using it to like split the sword into a bunch of different pieces so that we could like print them later on i'm just gonna use split body on this lines we just drew so to cut the sword at the points that we specified earlier with the sketch now we're gonna be doing the connectors so I'm just gonna go and select this middle part, hide that for a sec, and then this should basically expose this profile of the blade. You're gonna wanna click on that and then create sketch. And then just to keep it nice and quick, I'm just gonna like offset this shape by offset the outside contour by about like four millimeters, and then extrude it on both sides, 40 millimeters each. Now for this one, you really just wanna like uh, use, make a uh, create new body, don't join it, don't use it to cut. I'm gonna show you guys something later on. And also you're gonna wanna repeat that twofold on these two other points and now this is where things get interesting for this part of the sword that basically transitions between the blade into the handle uh, we're gonna be like drawing a sketch here and then I'm just gonna draw like a square shape profile with about a 15 times 15 millimeter length and then I'm gonna hit extrude remember this dotted line that we create back in the splitting tools sketch this is how far we're gonna be extending that so just to keep it nice and simple i'm just gonna like switch the extend type to object and then select that as the object that we're gonna be extending to and we're gonna like want to make sure that one goes to join but but you're gonna want to make sure that this only joins to this part right here and does not include the handle or the handguard at all so yeah just like hide them for a sec or something and so now that we have like a bunch of connectors laid out on our blade we're gonna be creating the holes in which this connector can actually like fit in there nicely so basically how we're gonna do this is that we're gonna hit combine and then select like whichever blade section you're gonna start with as like the target body and then use these connectors we just created as a tool body switch the operation to cut and then don't forget to hit keep tools this way we could like create a hole but at the same time these connectors are not gonna be removed they're gonna they're gonna stay there now we're just gonna like rinse and repeat this process until every single part that overlaps with the connector are basically cut up when needed to and now here's Here's another part where it gets interesting. Now, quick question. You have like a 10 millimeter cylinder and you're gonna wanna fit it into a hole. How big is the hole gonna be? 10 millimeter? Nah, bruh. It's gotta be slightly bigger than that. I mean, giving a 10 millimeter hole is intuitive now, isn't it? But that's not how it works. It has to be slightly bigger so that this cylinder could actually fit in there. Else it, it simply won't fit. But there's like two ways we can do this. One, we can make the hole bigger, or two, we can make the part smaller. So I'm gonna go hit Q, which is press pull, so that we can actually like offset these edges by a little amount. Now this might vary, but personally like the sweet spot for me has got to be uh, minus 0.2 millimeters. At least with my usual 3D printing settings, this should be like the settings that are just like, that's not gonna be like very loose, but at the same time, it's not gonna be very hard to insert to that either. And there we go. That's basically the sort done right there. Now to export the part we just made, we're gonna wanna scroll to utilities tab, and then hit this 3D printer icon, select one part, uh, scroll down to the output, disable sense of 3D printing utility, hit OK, and then basically just save this file wherever you want. Now once you have every part saved up, I'm gonna show you guys like the setting I normally use for Cura. So once you've opened Cura, you're gonna wanna hit this folder icon, and then look for the part that you just saved earlier, I'm just gonna like go grab this blade tip right here and then I'm just gonna like uh, rotate that so that it fits uh, the diagonal side of my printer and then for the slicing I'm just gonna go with like my personal default settings I'm just gonna go and let this setting scroll on screen so you guys can copy exactly how I did it but like Quite frankly, there isn't much to my settings. This is literally like the settings I would use on all of my builds. So unless that I like specify otherwise, just go with these numbers and perhaps like tweak it yourself if you please. So yeah, I think that's just about everything I need to break down about the Night Sky Sword video. I hope you guys find this video helpful and then I'll see you guys in my next project. Until then, say hello.